Hey there, welcome back. I want to introduce you to someone. This man's name is Robert Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. He is an American software engineer, instructor, and best selling author. He is most recognized for developing solid principles and being one of the founders of the influential Agile Manifesto. SOLID stands for five design principles that aim to make object-oriented designs more understandable, flexible, and maintainable. The principles are a subset of many principles, first introduced in his paper Design Principles and Design Patterns, discussing software rot. Also, SOLID is often criticized for not being particularly clear. We'll look at these principles with examples from iOS development today. Let's start with the first principle, the single responsibility principle. It states that there should be never more than one reason for a class to change. Author avoids using the word responsibility because it's a vague concept. For instance, our UI view controller class is responsible for screen management and may have 3000 lines of code, including requests to the network and database. However, having only one reason to change this class makes it clear that UI view controller has too many reasons to change, including changing the logic of working with the API, changing the database, and redesigning the UI. This is a classic ANSI pattern in iOS known as Massive View Controller, a violation of this principle. What are the problems in this case? Responsibilities are strongly interconnected. In case of correcting a small mistake or introducing a new feature, we can break something else without even noticing it. The second is that the readability of the class is awful. It is difficult to work with a huge and confusing file. In such a situation, when we have a UI view controller with more than 2000 lines, it is very difficult to navigate and work with such a file. And most importantly, such a class is hard to maintain in test. Ok, let's look at another example of Apple's violation of the principle of single responsibility. Every iOS app has an app delegate that implements the app delegate protocol. There are 35 methods in this protocol and the implementation of all lies in one class. And this class has a huge number of responsibilities. Application initialization, push notifications, background work and data loading, quick actions processing, app state restoration, etc. As new requirements and features arise, the class grows and grows and becomes a black hole that sucks matter into itself. We would like the opposite approach. Implement the code so there are many small classes for different responsibilities. This can be done via message forwarding in Objective-C or by proxying. The idea is to create many helpers for App Delegate to do their part of the work, allowing App Delegate to be small. Following the principle of single responsibility leads to a reduction of the complexity in our code. Moving on, let's talk about the open closed principle. The principle suggests that the software entities like classes, modules, functions, and others should be open for extension but closed for modification. This seems like an extreme idea. If we wrote the code once, we can never change it again? Not really. The idea is that when adding new functionality, we do not need to change the old code and rewrite everything, but add new entities that will be called from the old code. There is a good example from iOS development, main news view controller in app like Instagram. Take a look at the mockup. Imagine that initially we had table exclusively with photo cells. But then, in the course of the development of the app, we also got cells with ads and videos. Let's see how it often looks in the code. Consider the cell for row UI table view method. What's going on here? We get a model from the array of models for this screen, and then we have a repeating logic for each model. We dequeue a new cell, configure it with the model, and add some custom logic. Over time, this method will grow and grow with the addition of new cell types and may become simply endless. How can we do better? Let's look at a more flexible solution. In it, we use a shared model called cell view model and a shared cell configurable table view cell. The configuration code looks compact and simple. Do you like it? In this solution, we have three different cells, photo cell, video cell, and add cell. All of these cells use the same configurable cell protocol. 
which contains a configure with cell view model method. We call this cell configuration method in the cell for row method of our UI table view. Next, we have model objects that contain the necessary data for rendering cells, photo, video, and add. All of them use the same cell view model protocol, which has a cell class method that returns the cell class. These two protocols are connected and cannot work without each other. By implementing this solution, working with the table becomes easier. When adding a new model, the cell for row method doesn't need to be changed. This allows new cell types to be added without altering the view controller's code and adheres to the open-closed principle. It's important to know that this principle should not be applied universally, as it can lead to unnecessary abstractions and boilerplate code. Instead, it's recommended by Uncle Bob to apply this principle when facing changes to the old code and to change the architecture so it's extensible without modification. If changes in the application requirements violate the open-closed principle, the code should be adapted to subsequent changes. As the saying goes, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. The next principle is the Liskov substitution principle, which was introduced by Barbara Liskov. The principle states that subtypes must be substitutable for their base types, meaning that the derived classes should adhere to the contract of the base class. This principle is important for ensuring the correctness of inheritance implementation. For example, let's consider a UI view controller with various views that need to have their transparency changed. If one of the views is a UI visual effect view, which is inherited from UI view, changing its transparency will break the UI. Apple made this decision to prioritize inheriting from UI view over complying with the substitution principle. It is essential to remember this and avoid repeating this mistake in our code to prevent unexpected bugs and other issues. Next is the interface segregation principle. It states that clients should not be forced to depend upon interfaces that they do not use. Let's consider the example of developing a Telegram app. The chat protocol is implemented by several entities, group, supergroup, secret chat, and channel. However, these entities will have a single interface with the same methods even though they use different methods from the underlying protocol. For instance, the group uses get messages, send message, reply and forward. The supergroup has additional methods like pin message and ban user, while the secret chat uses send self-destruct message and delete for both users. The channel, on the other hand, has no functionality except for receiving and forwarding messages, because it works just like a newsfeed of posts. This creates a problem where classes have to implement methods that they don't need, resulting in unnecessary stubs and overriding of methods. To solve this, it's best to break the basic protocol into separate ones, so that each entity only takes the functionality it needs. And the last principle is dependency inversion principle. Its definition consists of two parts. The first is high-level modulus should not depend on low-level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. The second is abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. Let's consider an example. Imagine that we are developing a screen with a newsfeed. We have a UI view controller that displays our newsfeed and in it, in code, we access core data to get the data. With this approach, we have a UI view controller that turns out to be a direct dependency on core data. If we want to change the database to Realm, then we will have to rewrite the code in all view controllers. How can this be solved? Let's introduce the feed provider interface, which will contain the get feed method. The use feed provider class will implement this interface and in it we will access core data. And in the code of our view controller, we will refer to the feed provider interface. In this case, our high-level model view controller will depend on abstraction, and our low-level model news feed provider will depend on the same abstraction. It is also a good solution to inject this dependency into our view controller and not just create it in it. 
To do this, we can pass it to the view controller initializer or use a special library, dependency injector container, which will help us organize dependency injection in our app. The dependency inversion principle is primarily about reversing the conventional direction of dependencies from higher level components to lower level components such that lower level components are dependent upon the interfaces owned by the higher level components. Higher level component here refers to the component requiring external dependencies or services, not necessarily its conceptual position within a layered architecture. In doing so, coupling isn't reduced so much as it is shifted from components that are theoretically less valuable to components which are theoretically more valuable. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a like and leave some comments. I'd love to answer any questions you may have about architecture. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.